stillness deep deep within us from small beginnings it flows into the living water the ocean of god through our stillness god moves i want to thank my friend Paulette Meyer for this beautiful Quaker chant and her friend and mine now, Gerard Guiton, who wrote the lyrics and thank them both for letting me sing it here. You can find the words to it in another entirely separate video posted here on my channel, thanks to their permission. And when I get nervous, which is often very, I remember that my name means song or poem, Carmen, and so I sing. Here's another one, a few Buddhist cones that I put together with a melody that came and that I made up. I am gratitude, I am gratitude. The present moment is my true self and I am whole right now. I am here, I am here, I am gratitude. And one that has helped me in a whole lot because I do suffer from severe anxiety. And yes, I meditate a lot. Is the preface to the cloud of unknowing, which I love to sing in both medieval and modern English in my translation. God, unto whom alle hertes ben open, and unto whom alle willes speketh, and unto whom no private thing is hid. I besage they so for to cleanse the untent of mean heart with the unspeakable gift of the grassa that he may perfect lich love a they and were the lich praise a they amen god to you all hearts are open to you all longing speak and to you no secret thing is hidden I beg you purify the intention of my heart through the unspeakable gift of your grace so I can love you with all I am and praise you for all you are. Amen. I've been preparing for a retreat that I'm leading soon. And I just finished a handout on the welcoming prayer practice created by Mary Mrazowski. And so I wanted to share that because it is one of the simplest, wisest, easiest, most efficacious approaches, has a way of flowing naturally from centering prayer, which of course is the fourth non-step in contemplative prayer as found in the cloud of unknowing, where you have read, reflect, respond, and rest and that fourth one rest is what centering prayer really has sort of come out of and adapted by Thomas Keating, William Miniger and Basil Pennington and many others. Cynthia Bourgeau most recently and very many others. Richard Rohr, James Finley, Christine Walters Paintner, and really the list goes on and on. Keith Christich, 
Jana Rensel. And I'm really grateful for all people helping us return to these ancient roots. It's why I feel very fortunate, blessed really, to have been able to translate The Cloud of Unknowing, The Book of Privy Council, Practice of the Presence by Brother Lawrence, also Hildegard, and other women mystics, and to have worked and translated some of Benedict of Nursia. So the welcoming prayer or the welcoming practice, often you will hear it called both or either. And I know that Cynthia Bourgeau makes a very good point wanting to and preferring the welcoming practice to emphasize that it's an ongoing exercise. So one of the things that I do is I call it the welcoming prayer practice altogether. So I'm very accustomed to thinking about Brother Lawrence's practice of the presence prayer or the presence prayer practice. So you have the presence prayer and you do it often as an exercise like lifting weights and then you know it's a practice you don't just lift weights once obviously so the thing about all of these prayers is that they're both good to do sitting so you can do a 15 or 20 minute session of the welcoming prayer practice or you can do it on the go or you can do a five minute sitting or a 10 minute sitting or whatever works for you. But in general, the centering prayer sessions are about 20 minutes or 15 and that's a good uh, amount of time. And if you're one of those who really likes to have something to do on the go, it's also a what I sometimes call a going exercise. You have a sitting exercise and a going one where you can do it on the go. And so one of the things I most love about the people I've translated is that they all emphasize experimentation. And what they really say is, this is what works for me. Now you try it and then you try what works for you. See if what I've recommended works and then also you uh, try what works for you and come back and tell me so I can learn from you. So there are no gurus uh, exactly. And instead the emphasis is on agency in the seeker and on community. So what Barbara A. Holmes often always emphasizes is the community aspect of contemplative prayer. You know, the drum beats, the dancing, the communal aspects of it that is so very important. So often we think about centering prayer and one way I think of centering prayer is it's the prayer of letting go. And that's why this welcoming prayer practice by Mary Merzowski really is flows naturally from centering prayer because it's very much a, a letting go in a way. So it just has three very simple movements. The first you can remember as focus, feel, sink. That's the first movement it has three many aspects to it. Focus, feel, and sink. So the first one is focus, and that is pausing and becoming aware of sensations in your body because this is where we store emotional, unresolved emotions, our emotional programs that have come about over years of defending ourselves and being hurt and wounded experiencing trauma and so we focus 
And because I have dyslexia, I'm always looking up words to see what their stories are, what their background is. Helps me to feel like we're friends. The word focus, we all see it all the time, but I didn't know that it means, originally comes from the Latin for hearth or fireplace. Or if I did know it, I have forgotten it it seems like a pretty basic piece of Latin, right? But I think I just got so far away from it because, you know, today we think focus and we associate it with looking at screens and, you know, it was first used to talk about uh, the way when light refracts, it comes to this point. And often if, you know, you um, are doing this, uh, it's, it's, it's focusing the light but what I love about it is that it is actually grounded in this Latin notion of hearth, home, family, and fireplace, where you always kept the fire burning. And so I love this notion because our body is our hearth in many ways. It is the place where our sacred lives happen and our body is our friend in so many ways and in our world of screens we tend to forget the body we live intellectually it's very easy to do so we focus we come back into the hearth into our bodies our home our bodies and we feel and feel literally means to touch we, we open to any sensations and then we drop in, which is, you think of sink, think of when you throw a pebble or a stone into a lake and it sinks and we drop in to them. So if you scan your body and become aware of sensations and just be present with them, that's the first movement is focus, Scan your body. What do you feel in this moment? Caught, cold, can be that kind. Tired, do you feel joy? Hot, I say it's hot again because it's quite hot here today and to record I had to turn off the uh, upright air conditioner. And is it joy? I say that again because sometimes we only bring up the ones that were like, ah, do you feel fear, anger, grief, frustration, whatever it might be, or tired, whatever it might be, the second movement, just first of all, just be aware. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can just be one sensation that you might choose to, to focus on. And you're just being present with it, really. You're like letting it be. And you're saying, oh, what I do sometimes helps me, partly because I'm also influenced by Richard Schwartz's internal family systems work in No Bad Parts and elsewhere, is that I will say hi and talk with my, with my emotions but you do what works best for you. So that's the first movement. Focus, feel, and sink. Return to your home, your hearth, and where we have the body to thank for trying so hard to take care of us, where our unresolved emotions are lodged is the body. and So we're just getting in touch with what you feel in this moment with what I feel in this moment. And then welcome what you're experiencing in your body as a way to say yes to the divine, to love, to God, to the presence, to true self, however you might think of it. I love the word welcome because it comes from will, the well part, which means pleasure and C-U-M-A, which is from to come, 
Kuma used to mean guest. So it literally means, as in the German, when you often hear, sei willkommen, be welcomed. Literally, Kuma used to mean guest. So the second half of welcome literally has the word guest in it, which means person coming to visit. And if you're like me, if you've ever gone somewhere and you're nervous about going and the people there are so open and welcoming, it's just such a wonderful feeling. When I was in Germany as a 22-year-old student, I was sick then in many ways. And a friend of a friend, Sophie Buschbeck, she had been a refugee during World War II in Germany. Her husband was a Lutheran minister and he was in a Russian prison camp for five years, came back emaciated, but she prayed for him every day and she was so pleased when he came back. Well, Fritz was, had passed when I knew Sophie, not too long before I came. And when she and her eight children had been refugees, a professor and his wife at my undergraduate school had sent them shoes and food and other items. And so a friendship across the waters was born. And my professor said, oh, you got picked to go to Heidelberg. Well, we know Sophie Bushbeck, you could contact her. So there I was very homesick and I would show up at her house on Mozartstrasse, 2830, I can still remember. And she would open the door wide and say, Schön, 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 dass du da bist. I could be so cold. I was so homesick. I was sick also physically. And she would open that door wide and with incandescent joy, as if I was somebody like her very best friend. Schön, 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 dass du da bist. It's beautiful, it's beautiful, it's wonderful that you're here. Wonderful that you're here. So whenever I see the word welcome, I think of Sophie. So the second movement of the welcoming prayer practice is welcome what you're experiencing in your body as a way to say yes to the divine love, God, presence, true self. So say welcome frustration, welcome grief, welcome joy, welcome fear, welcome anger. You welcome only the physical or psychological content. You're not welcoming an external situation like cancer. Cynthia Bourgeau reminds that you're not, quote, passively acquiescing to situations that are in fact intolerable. So, and in fact, often this welcoming prayer practice can give us the strength to have a richer ability to be articulate about situations that are in fact intolerable and we're able to better stand up for ourselves and also have boundaries and find our way through in a healthy way. So that's the second movement. Welcome fear. That's one for me a lot. Welcome fear. Sometimes it's welcome joy. Number three, the third movement. Then after sitting with it for some time and being present with it or them, because it's up to you if you pick one or more, whatever, when you scan your body, what do you feel in your body? Could be an ache even. Sometimes my arms ache. After some time, when you feel it is time, you let it go. And you say, 
I let go of my fear. And then add, I let go of my desire for security, affection, control. I let go of my wish to change what I am experiencing. I embrace this moment as it is. And you word that however it most helps you. This really helps us unburden acquired emotional programs and heal lifetime wounds because we're addressing them where they're stored in our body. And often a therapist and or a spiritual director can be a huge support and, and needed. So let's try it together. Well, I like to be trauma-minded whenever doing meditations. So sit comfortably or stand or lie down or walk around, whatever works best for you. Everybody is different. And feel your feet on the floor if possible. And we'll take a few breaths. Gentle and slow. And then focus. Return to your hearth, your body, your home, our home and scan it. What sensations do you feel? Get in touch with whatever you're feeling in this moment, whether it's a physical sensation or some kind of emotion, or in the case of when sometimes my arms hurt, sometimes when I type, my fear makes me uptight and my arms can feel tired. It's kind of the way all this works together, right? And so scan your body and become aware of any sensations and be present with them. Drop into them and just be present with any sensations. Just be there with them. And welcome what you're experiencing in your body as a way to say yes to love, to return to the divine, to God, to presence, to your true self. Just say welcome to it and name it. and let it go when you feel it's time. I let go of my and to end add I let go of my desire for security affection control. I let go of my wish to change what I am experiencing. I embrace this moment as it is. So we'll go through the third movement again. 
I let go of my I let go of my desire for security, affection, control. I let go of my wish to change what I am experiencing. I embrace this moment as it is. And again, I invite you to Word that as you wish. And then take a few more breaths. And this can be done in a moment when about to open email when about to travel, when you're about to wash dishes or washing dishes, just focus, drop in, touch whatever you're feeling or sensing, and it can be both done sitting for a longer period, or it can be done on the go. I like to end with a song. So we'll end as we began. Stillness deep, deep within us. From small beginnings it flows into the living water. The ocean of God through our stillness, God, moves. Blessings on you all. Thank you for being here.